Lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy shall endure forever. And his mercy shall endure forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For he is good. And his mercy shall endure forever. In Jesus' name we pray. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen. Our Psalms reading is Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou has been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. Tabernacle forever. I will trust in thy covert of thy in the cover of thy wings. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Say la. Our Psalms reading is Psalm 61, verses 1 through 4. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, the hearing, and the doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. We got uh the caravan. <laughs> Friday night. They're gonna sing a selection right quick. Praise the Lord. Testing.
can. Yes, you can. Oh, yeah. Yes, you can. Oh, yes. Yeah. Singers, <laughs> doing a good job. They had did that. People find out when you're doing stuff. A lot of people say they want to do stuff for the Lord. When they find out it ain't nothing but some more work, they be like, okay, I'm going to hold off on that. And it is a lot of work. They... You know, them sisters, they do a lot anyway, so, but uh, it was good since this is the Sabbath and the feast, it's good that they able to uh, give us some inspiration. And I'm going to just do a short couple of scriptures, really, because uh, Brother Hezekiah is going to teach tonight. So, uh, but before I get into the scriptures, I just want to say like I mentioned, this is the feast, the fourth day. This is hump day of the feast. So, uh, and the goal is, the Lord gave you seven days. The goal is to complete the feast. And the Lord kind of make it easy for you when it comes to stuff like this, because everybody like eating good and having a good time. But we got to remember what the meaning is. And so, when we say complete the feast, which ends... Uh, Tuesday, we mean complete your walk with the Lord, because that's really what's, what it's about. And uh, since we're going to be back in the morning, I say, well, have Hezekiah teach this evening, because, uh, you know, I'm doing a lot of teaching. So, And the brothers still need to get some exercise in teaching, too. So I want to look at some in Luke, but before I get to the scripture, Luke 12, before I get to the scripture, uh, concerning feast, it's the feast, and we feast, we do what we can to feast, like the Lord said, seven days, but we won't be feasting tomorrow uh, here. We just going to have a holy convocation. You can go home and eat. You can go home and feast, so you don't have to bring no food tomorrow. We're not going to feast, and that's mainly, that's because we thought about it because of this situation that's going on, but it worked good when we did the first day and did the social distancing and was in the rooms that worked good so we could have did that tomorrow but 
then looked around, and after the feast, people just left food everywhere, and we just can't do that. I came here um, Thursday about 8 to get ready for the kids' Bible study online, which is another, another uh, as they say, bone I got to pick. <laughs> Cause it's, it's, it's optional this week, the kids' Bible study on, online, because this is the feast week. This will be spring break, but they've been on spring break. They've been on break, break, break. <laughs> so, so they can still get up. It's good to deal with the Bible every day. So we there. I only got a couple faithful. I saw Del Courtney showed up one day. I tried to get him to read. Uh, he didn't have his Bible handy. But only other faithfuls I got besides people that don't even go to the school is uh, Isaac and Lewis. So they do. They have. They they carrying a the load. They reading and praying and doing everything because I don't have no other children. I think I got a Naira there. A Naira, be, she's, she, she's there, but, you know, everybody's not at the age where they can read. <clears throat> so, that being said, we're not going to have no feast tomorrow here. You can feast at home. It's the fourth day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. The only thing we really must do here is have a holy convocation and that's what we'll do and then you could go home and feast because again I got here Wednesday to do the Bible study and I found whole plates just left there whole plates so it's too it's, it's, it's enough blame to go around because I left early and first of all a grown person shouldn't make a plate and just leave it and I saw multiple plates full plates of food that's been out all night. So grown persons don't need to make a plate of food and just leave it there and don't come back to it. And even if it's a child, you know, we got to be able to keep eye on the kids. But that place didn't look like no child plate. It, it was grown plate. One of them was out in the hallway. I, kept, I saw it before I left, but you don't nobody do nothing because you figure whoever plate that is, they're going to come back and get it. <clears throat> Never did. Nobody came back and got it. Not to mention a bunch of pans. So people shouldn't do that. And then, you know, we got people here that's in, in charge, that's locking up. Nobody that's locking up and at least should need to take a check and see what's going on. Because I had to do all that stuff. I threw all that pans and plates away. But it was a day late. So, but that's, you know, so we got to have a follow through on that. So we're going to have to designate somebody particularly because if you just leave it where, say, people will be responsible, that don't happen. So, so that's why you, we just feast at home tomorrow. We'll try it again on the seventh day of the feast, Tuesday. So getting into this, we talking about completing the feast. The Lord give you seven days to complete it. And that's a great message in that, just like we hear today on the seventh day of the week. We hear on the seventh day of the week because that represents completion. So look at this in Luke 12, Luke the 12th chapter. And this is what it's all about. So much for people thinking that they presto get saved and don't have to worry about it anymore. If you understood how the Lord complete things in seven, you would know you have to endure. So I'm just going to read a couple of things. Matter of fact, I'm going to read this Luke 12, and then I'm going to read Matthew 25, and then I'm going to turn it over to Brother Hezekiah. But I want to show that the goal is to complete the feast of unleavened bread, complete the feast spiritually. That means continue your walk with God unto the end because everybody not going to do it. So we have to be cognizant to know that we got to complete this thing. Mm -hmm. Con continue and complete your walk with God. That's what we got to be mindful of. Luke 12 and we'll pick it up at verse because uh, again we, we know we're near in the end when the Lord is going to come, right? Mm-hmm. And just to show you how 
He told you it was going to be nothing but problems in this world. We're going to start at verse 49. And that's why he got to come and settle things and bring that peace. But he got to bring drama in order to enact peace. Luke 12 and 49. Luke 12 and 49. Go ahead and read it. I am come to send fire on the earth. Mm -hmm. And what will I if it be already kindled? Mm -hmm. But I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I straightened till it be accomplished? He said, I am come to send fire on earth. And what will I if it be already kindled? He said, I come to send fire on earth. He come to bring, he come to bring problems because in order to get people to get right in this world and follow him, it's going to cause upheaval because the world is backwards. This is the Feast of Unleavened Bread. They, they know nothing about it as a whole. Even though it's a shutdown, the people that shut down, they mainly concerned with figuring out how to observe Good Friday, which they call today, not in the Bible, and Easter. And they actually call this week starting with Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. They call it Holy Week. Oh, this is Holy Week. It's Holy Week. It don't have nothing to do with that, though. Right. What Holy Week is, according to the Bible, it's a Holy Week. It's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes, sir. Starting with the Passover, which we celebrated. That's the only Holy Week it is. But the world is backwards. So in order for the Lord to get some followers and shake things up, that's what he got to do. He said, I got to send fire on earth. And when he come back, he coming in flame and fire because all this mess. But I have a baptism to be baptized with and how I'm straight until it be accomplished because he knew he had to die. He had to be crucified. Verse 51. Suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth. You suppose that? What? I tell you nay, uh -huh. but rather division. You mean Jesus come to bring division? That's right, because when you get the word, when you stop celebrating Good Friday and Easter, which is paganism, false teaching, the problem, part of the problem, because that's one of the most dangerous things you could do against God is worship other gods. You worshiping a goddess. When you stop doing that and honoring the Lord, keeping his Sabbaths, keeping his holy days, you, you run into division in your own family. You run into that division. Friends and family think you crazy because you believe the Bible. Suppose you die, come send peace on earth. I tell you, nay but rather division. He's going to explain it, 52. For from his forth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two and mm -hmm. two against three. Go ahead. The father shall be divided against the son Go ahead. and the son against the father, uh -huh. the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother. Go ahead. The mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law mm -hmm. and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Go ahead. Just division across the board. And he said also to the people, when you shall see That's good. Back up now, back up now to verse uh, 41, because he was, read 40 first, because he was talking about down to the end when he was going to come. Go ahead, verse 40. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. See, he's talking about it's coming, and it's coming is approaching. It, it won't be any day now, even though we're in the midst of some terrible times. We still got some time before he comes. We got years. At least we know. Uh, a good 10 years before the Lord could come because we know certain signs that got to happen, at least they're about. So, but it's getting close. And he going to come. Whether you believe in some of my Muslim brothers, y'all believe in the sky, God, he going to come through the sky and you going to find out. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man coming at an hour when you think not. Go ahead. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speaketh thou this parable unto us, or even so. Uh -huh. And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his house, mm -hmm. to give them their portion of meat in due season? Go ahead. Blesses that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find doing so. In, in other words, blesses the one that's still doing what he's supposed to be doing. That's doing what I'm talking about, completing the feast. Go ahead. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. Uh-huh. But, but and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to beat the men's servants and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken, mm -hmm. the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. 
and at an hour when he is not aware. Okay, and, go ahead. And will cut him asunder, and, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. So this is a this is an example on how everybody wanting won't complete the feast. In other words, they won't endure to the end. They won't overcome. You could know God today and you can fall off the train tomorrow. Some will. He talked about blessed is the servant who continues to do God's will. Verse 43, blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Of a truth I say that he will make him rule over all that he has. But verse 45, he tells you the other side. It's always another side. But if that service said in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. In other words, you get tired of waiting on the Lord. You get tired of doing what the Lord tell you to do. You get weary with that. You want to do something different. The Lord, he said, he said, my Lord delayeth his coming. And he go back out in the world. He said, begin to beat the men's servants and the maidens and to eat and drink and be drunkard. Just, just, just bawling, having fun again. Not thinking about the Lord no more because he got weary with doing what thus said the Lord. It became all about him now. He's just going to do his thing again. Verse 46 said, The Lord of that servant when come, will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware, and will cut him in sunder. And notice this, and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. He going to get the reward of unbelievers. But the sad thing here is he was not an unbeliever. He was a believer once upon a time. That's what he said. He, he got tired of serving God. So this is why the Lord lets you know you got to complete the cycle. That's why he got the seventh day of the week Sabbath, which we here to honor. And he got the feast the last seven days. And the day concerning the feast Starting at sundown, it's the fourth day, so it's hump day on the feast, and we're going to complete that next week. But you have to complete the feast, meaning you have to con complete your walk with the Lord. That's why the Bible keeps saying, endure to the end, or he that overcometh, he that overcometh. So that, that servant to turn back, he's going to be in trouble. Verse 46, he said, at the Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him. He was a servant. But he didn't continue. And in an hour when he is not aware and will cut him in sunder and would appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. 47, pay attention. And that servant which knew his Lord's will. See, he knew it. That servant which knew his Lord's will. I know people that have been keep, with keeping the feast, keeping the holy days, keeping the Sabbath day, keeping the laws. Next thing you know, they say, you ain't got to do none of that no more. Go ahead. And prepared not himself, mm -hmm. neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. See, people act like this is just, you know, so happy-go-lucky. You just get saved, and that's it. Not according to Jesus. Jesus said the servant that knew his Lord's will, you knew what you should have did, but did not prepare himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. And notice the next person can get some mercy from the Lord. Because the more you know, the more that's required of you. Go ahead. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. See, because they didn't know. See, that's how the Lord is. He's lenient when you don't know, but you can't plead ignorance. You should want to know. But for those who never get the opportunity to know a lot about the Lord, the Lord going to judge them according to what they knew. Go ahead. For, for unto whomsoever much is given... Of him shall be much required. That's right. And to him, to whom may have committed much, of him they will ask the more. That's right. Matthew 25, and then I'm going to turn it over to Brother Hezekiah. Matthew 25. Another great example. This is a parable Jesus gave about some virgins, but all of us telling you, you got to follow this thing through to completion. So we're in the midst of the feast. We got to complete this seven-day cycle. But more importantly, equally important, we have to complete our walk with God to the end. That's the message we want to take. Because this bread in itself don't save you, this unleavened bread that we're eating for seven days. But the bread of life is the word of God that we got to continue to eat. And you eat that by hearing the word and by doing it. That's how you eat that. 
25 and 1. Go ahead. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. Uh -huh. And they that were foolish took their lamp and took no oil with them. Mm -hmm. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a great cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Okay. Then arose all the uh, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. Okay, so this is the same type of scenario, brothers and sisters. These are people that know. How do we know? They know because Jesus is the bridegroom, and we waiting on him to come. Just like the other scripture in Luke 12 we read. We waiting on him to come. The church is represented, it's called the bride. So, and you become a virgin, whether you're a man or a woman, you become a virgin to God when you repent and clean your act up. You get a clean slate, so you become a virgin. So notice he's using ten virgins as an example in this parable. He said, the kingdom of heaven shall be like ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. So this again is letting you know everybody's not going to make it. Because some people find out about the Lord and then they, they do not continue and complete the process. So he's calling them foolish. So he said five were wise and five were foolish. Well, what made the, uh, the ones foolish? You know, they're going to meet the ground. You're going on a journey. That's why the, fe the lesson the other day for the first day of the feast was the unleavened journey begins. So we on a journey. Right now we're in the midst of the journey. We got to complete this journey and we got to stay on point. Complete this journey walking with the Lord. So they going on a journey. They got lamps <clears throat> and it say, uh, verse 3, they that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil. In other words, they didn't make preparation. They didn't acknowledge how long the journey was going to be, <clears throat> and they had to prepare for it. They didn't understand. They didn't take no oil. But the wise at verse 4 said they took oil in their vessels with their lamps. So they knew. They said, look, I got I to take, I got to prepare for this. I got to be able to overcome things. I got to have me some extra oil. These understood. But go ahead, verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, <laughs> Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But so now, what did it say? It said, the wise took oil, but the foolish didn't. Verse 5 said, while the bridegroom tarried, all slumbered and slept. So you, everybody is going to seek the Lord. He's the bridegroom. Everybody's saying, we're going to be there when, it's, when time comes for the Lord to come. We want to be ready. But the foolish were not prepared and were not ready. The wise were prepared. But notice verse 5 said, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. So everybody needs some rest. Everybody get weary on this journey. So it's not like you don't get weary. The key is not fainting. Everybody get weary. Everybody go through hard times. You know, the whole world is weary now. But if you're a servant of God, you're going to endure pandemics, whatever it is, because you know the end of the road. You already know this stuff. Matter of fact, we've been waiting on more and more stuff to happen. So when it happened, you can't faint. It said, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. At midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom coming. Go, you out to meet him. Verse 7, then all those birds and rose, and they trimmed and left. Now, all ten of them. He said, oh, it's that time. They rose and see what they're working with. And now the foolish end up scrambling. Verse 8 said, and the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil for our lamps are out, going out. Verse 9. But the wise answer saying, not so, let there's, let, lest there be not enough for us and you. See, this, this moral of this story is everybody got to work out their own salvation. When it comes down to it, I tell parents, you can't even save your kids. Your kids get to choose. And they're going to have to choose the right road when they become of age. You can make them do things right now when they're young. But when they get old, they get to choose too, just like you did. 
They get to be grown. So every soul got to work out their own salvation. The Lord said, all souls are mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The soul of the Father and the soul of the Son. So these were foolish. They said, give us some oil to the wise. But then verse 9 said, but the wise answered, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but rather go to them and sell it like, I can't help you. I, I've been struggling. I barely made it to this point with what I got. So, and the, and, the, and the sad thing about it is, and the bad thing about it is, these, all the virgins started out on the same road. All of them had the information they needed. The foolish just didn't take it serious enough to prepare themselves, just like keeping the Sabbath. Some people could get lackadaisical about keeping the Sabbath. They get lackadaisical. But somebody that, that's wise, they're going to say, look, I'm going to keep getting that oil. I'm going to keep getting that oil and stay on point. So everybody knew what to do, but the foolish took it lightly. And now when it comes time to put up or shut up, they're not ready. And the why, it, so Basically, it's, it's nothing that nobody else can do for you when you already know what you should do and you just don't do it. Nothing nobody else can tell you. I've talked to brothers who was in the Word before me, and then they ran off, started acting crazy in the Word. I don't know what they was doing because I'm trying to serve the Lord, but I know they wasn't around, and they kind of gave me indication they'd been all over the world acting a fool. And then they said, Brother, I'm, I'm, trying, to, I'm just trying to get back. How can you help me get back? And I really be at a loss for words. Like, you know already. You've been knowing. We came up together. You knew the same thing I know. What can I tell you that you really hadn't heard and don't know already? And I've been struggling trying to maintain my spot where I'm at. So this is what's going on here. He said, but the wise answer, verse 9, said, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you, but go rather than to sell and buy. And buy for yourselves, verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom <laughs> came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, uh -huh. and the door was shut. Uh -huh. now, the bridegroom came, and the ones ready went in, and the door was shut, and the five foolish not in there. Go ahead. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Go ahead. Watch, therefore... And for ye know neither the day nor the hour where the Son of Man come. Now the Lord is something else. When the when the the door was shut, in other words, somebody need to tell their neighbor the Lord will shut the door on you. Like your parent to tell you to be in at a certain time and you not in, they shut the door and said, No, nah, don't come to my house after a certain time. That's how the Lord is. He shut the door. And the ones ready getting in. And the ones that end up scrambling, they're not going to make it. Afterwards, verse 11, they came, other virgins saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. They know who the Lord is and everything. But the Lord don't know them because they didn't stay the course. But he answered, verse 12, and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I know you not. Then the moral of the story, verse 13 is, Watch therefore, for ye know not. For ye know neither the day nor the hour when your Lord coming. So that means you have to stay prepared and you have to complete this journey. Hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name on that. I'm going to turn over to Brother Hezekiah. I keep, I keep forgetting uh, those that didn't get calendars. We're going to mail some out. And also, uh, but we got them. And also, uh, Sister Curlin, I've been meaning to mention that we're doing so much. She did get out the hospital. She's doing real well. Talked to her yesterday. And uh, she's doing good. So praise the Lord for that. And I'm going to turn it over to brother.
Testing, one, two. Testing, one, two. It ain't many times I can say, give Brother Elijah another round of applause for his lesson. Yeah, that's the brother that got me into this thing. I seen him on TV and I was like, I need to get that information. I need to see what he's teaching because what he's teaching is the truth. Praise the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and peace to everybody in the name of Jesus. Peace to everybody, uh, everybody on the social media. It's a blessing to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. Got a short lesson here. Title of it is, Without Shedding of Bloods, No Remission for Sin. And we all know that Jesus, we all have to get up under the blood of Jesus. But also, just speaking on that, you know, in today's world and the things that's going on from day to day, uh, far as in with the virus and everything that goes on. And you read through the scripture, you, you get some understanding. It's a blessing to know the Lord because in times like this, you need to know and have answers about what's going on and what it is that you need to do far as concern is. Because I had a person ask me before, you know, ask me a question like, you know, is this thing ever going to end? You know, are we going to be able to go back outside or whatnot and be able to do like with you? Hey, times is going to get worse. We already know that. But we can lay, you know, our hat on. We know what the Lord is doing. Now, as far as, as times going to get better, yeah, things, things going, we going to get a chance to get back out. And going to say, well, how, how, how do you know that? How do you know we're going to be able to get back out and be able to, you know, function and, do th some of the things like we used to. I said, because, you know, you can read it in the book. When you open up this book and read it, you'll start to understand how this thing go, and you'll start to get it and know. Because ain't nothing new under the sun. The Lord got his guidelines here to show us how things are supposed to be and things that goes on in the earth. Because there ain't, ain't nothing new. It all has happened before. But we're going to open it up in Hebrews, the ninth chapter. Hebrews, the ninth chapter. And when we get through this lesson, Lord willing, we'll see some of the things on why I said what I said. But hey, it go, it's been going on from the beginning of times. We had stuff going on. Things going to get worse, but hey, it is what it is. Hebrews, the ninth chapter, and we're going to read one verse there. Hebrews 9 and one verse there. At verse 22. 9 and 22. Go ahead. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding the blood, is no remission. Yeah, so he said, without being purged with blood, without shedding the blood, is no remission. So that's, that's what's taking place right now. People want to like, what's going on? Hey, it's, it's purging time. Because man has sinned, having done what he's we supposed to. And, hey, and the Lord come to collect. He come to collect. We know that, you know, we get up under the blood of Jesus, but at the... But it, when it's all said and done, hey, Lord, Lord can take care of his things first and foremost right up. And when sins get too high, you can read through the scripture. When you get too high and it start reaching up towards heaven, hey, the Lord start coming down to chop on people. And we wonder what's going on. Because a lot of people, I just read stuff, you know, about African Americans, like, you know, we, we, we dying at the highest rate of everything. Yeah, Israel, had, that ain't nothing new. We have always been dying at high rates. When anything come in, a plague or whatever, hey, we're going to get hit. And we're going to see why. We're going to read the book. Y'all been around for a little while. You already know. Israel always going to get hit. But without any knowledge, people, you know, I seen a little clip. Somebody had a clip of Puffy saying, well, we need to get together. He had a little chart showing alarming rates on how many people is, you know, how much in each, you know, few states. I think it was Illinois, you know, New York. That's how people, you know, as far as African Americans, how they are dying at alarming rate. But, hey, that's always been that case. Because we know why we dying at alarming rate. Hey, because we didn't do what we were supposed to. Mm -hmm. So since we didn't do what we were supposed to, hey, when the chopping block come down, we're going to be the first to get chopped down. So that was the title of this, Remission of Sin, because, hey, it's, time, it's purging time. That's what's going on. But it's always been like that. It's been in the beginning because we already know when you sin, hey, that brings forth death. You can't just be out here standing and doing whatever you want to do and don't think there'll be no repercussions behind it. Hey, they say Corona night, you know, 19 and it's a virus. Hey, the Lord controls it all. And we're going to figure that out and see that. And we're going to read that. 
That's exactly what it is. See, nobody want to lay the charge on where it's all coming from or who the mastermind behind all of this. People say, I don't believe in stuff, and they get nervous, and they scared about stuff. Hey, you want to be scared? You need to be scared of God because he don't want to do it. Forget Corona-19. I can shake that off. But I can't shake off the Lord because the Lord controls the whole world. But that shows you where the faith that in the world because the people don't believe that. Because if they really believe that, they wouldn't be acting the way they act. But the Lord is trying to shake them up. But hey, man, it's hard-headed, and he's going to continue to do what he want to do. And this is going to be the repercussions of that. It's always been the repercussion. When you sin, it brings forth death. Let's go to the beginning and read it. This is right off the bat with man. Genesis chapter 3. Right off the bat. Sin into the world, and we've, and we've been dying ever since. Because that's what brings forth death. If you didn't sin, you, would, you wouldn't have to die. But Genesis 3, and pick it up at verse 1. 3 and 1. Go ahead. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. So we know if you ain't been around long, the serpent, that's the devil. Go ahead. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said ye should not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but not of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden. God has said ye should not eat of it, Oh, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. So he told him, verse 3, he said, But the fruits of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And this is some bad information he was getting. Wasn't no apple. That's, that's, that's foolish. That's fairy tale. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are just like, What's Jesus? Jesus? Why he ate? No, it's a fruit of lies. He got, they got some bad information. The Lord told you, Hey, don't talk to them. But we'll see the outcome. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, You should not surely die. For God doth know in that day, in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye should be as gods, knowing good and evil. See, and this, this pricked her mind. Why is that? Because he, hey, she, hey, he told her, hey, you can be as gods. Which he told half the truth, but he, she going to die. But she will know good and evil, and she was interested in that. And obviously, we know how, we ain't ignorant to Satan devices, right? Right. So we all know how he operates. So what was going on? Obviously, it's just the way it is. When you start reading the book, you start to understand exactly how stuff goes and how things take place. Obviously, she had that on her mind. Hey, I want to be like God. That was on her mind, right? Because that's how he tempts you. That's how he comes. He comes with the things that you want the most. That's how he operates. He operates like that. So he comes through with those things that you desire, and he put it out there for you. And see if you're going to bite. So that's what happened. And verse 5, he said, read 5 again. For God doth know in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. So she was, she was hooked. She just hook, line, and sinker. So, because this is what I wanted. Oh, yeah? Go ahead. Verse 6. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food. Hey, it, hey man, look. That <laughs> sound, sound good. It's sweet. Go ahead. And that it was pleasant to the eyes. And a tree to be desired to make one wise. See, she was like, man, I want to be smart. I need to be God because God is smart. That's, that's the lick. That's what I want. But go ahead. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat. So she got all that information. And then what she do with that information? And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. So that information was passed. And she, she passed it on. She told him, man, let me tell you something, boy. I got some good stuff here. And he was like, man, bring it on. Which we know Adam should have rebuked it, but he didn't. So, hey, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, it, you know ain't, no, ain't no need to even worry about it now. It's, hey, it's out. Like Elijah always say, the horse out the pond already. It's, out. it's a done deal. If you tell people, hey, stop, you know, if you make a bad decision, hey, man, I made it, that's, that's it. Leave it alone. It's got done. Hey, it's done. Let's move on. And that's what's got to happen here because he already done did that. But go ahead, verse 7. And the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sold fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. So uh, you see, you see right here, they had some information here. They had some information because you know I talked to some people they would think it was an apple, and I said, "How do you know something?" Then I read that verse seven, and they was like, "Yeah, they knew that." I said, "Can you do that? Get that from an apple?" 
Can you, can you know something once you eat apple? It was like, no, nah, no, nah, you're right. I don't know why. Wow. Hey, that's just what's been going on. That's the lie that's been told. So they had some information. But go ahead. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. Go ahead. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, where art thou? Now, it's, a, it's, it's amazing, too. But it's always like that. You know, when you're doing something you ain't supposed to, you, 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 you be ashamed. You see, I watch people all the time. I see people that ain't doing what they're supposed to do. They're always looking around. <laughs> they're always watching over their back. As soon as you see somebody do something like this, you already know they, they ain't doing what they're supposed to. You can just sit there and watch them. You looking like this, you, you're in trouble. So they was hiding themselves because they knew they had done something wrong. Go ahead. What verse you at? Verse 10. Go ahead. And he said, I heard thy voice in the guard, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. So, hey, he said, man, I was naked, you know, so I hear you. I heard you, man. I hide myself. Go ahead. And he said, who told thee that thou was naked? See, once then he was told something. He said, man, who told you naked? Go ahead. Hast thou eaten of the tree where I have commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Yeah. And the man said, the woman that thou gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. So he said, hey, didn't I tell you don't do that? He said, hey, the woman you gave me, she, she gave me the tree, told me, gave me some of that information, and, hey, man, I, 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 was, I ran with it. I ran with it. But go ahead, 13. And the Lord God said unto the woman, what is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. So she said, hey, I was tricked. I was tricked, and I ate. But you know, he, but you got you with what you want. Mm -hmm. You know? Hey, because you go out to your own heart. We're going to read that. When you lust out to something, hey, you, that's what gets you. So she, she, she went for it, and that's what happened. Skip down to verse 21 and read that. Because he's, he's, bringing, he's bringing down sentence. And he's passing judgment down on them. All the way down from there. He started with Satan and he worked his way down. Go ahead. Unto Adam also and to his wife did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. So look, look, look what happened here. Because you got sin there. Hey, you got an animal here. I got to talk to Elijah and make sure I'm on point. But he here, so he'll tell me if I'm wrong or not. But it looked like something had to die for him to be clothed again. Yes, sir. Why? Because of sin. And that's, that's always been the case. Even with Israel doing all the sacrifice for sin, something had to die to let you know, hey, you got something had to die for you. When you got so much sin, something had to die. And sometimes it ain't just animals, it's people. Right. That's just the way of the world. That's just how it is. But let's go, let's go, to, let's go to Amos 3. Once you start to understand and realize who's in control of everything and what's going on in the world, you will feel a lot better because you understand what's going on. And you ain't, you ain't even got to really panic about what's going on and all the pestilence and all that. You say, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And we know that the Lord controls. We do believe that, right? Yes, sir. Amos 3. And pick it up at verse 1. Because when it's all said and done, when you talk about Israel and the plagues and they're always hitting us hard this is we're gonna get into why it's like that amos three and one go ahead hear this word that the lord hath spoken against you O children of israel against the whole family which i brought up from the land of egypt saying so he brought the whole family up from egypt saved them from pharaoh but keep in mind hey it was six hundred thousand males that came out not even counting women and children and only two of them made it into the land out of all those people. Why? Because of the iniquity. They did they 40 years in the wilderness and they were all they all died out there. So that just goes to show you you're talking about a purging going on. Hey, that's something serious. These numbers here are small compared to some stuff you read out of here. So he said, Hear this word that I've spoken to you, old children, videos against the whole family which I brought up. From the land of Egypt, saying what? You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. See, this is why it's that case. People wonder why we get hit the hardest. Because he said, you get punished for what? All. All your iniquities. 
And the Lord is perfect, so you ain't sliding by on nothing. You ain't sliding by. You not getting by at all. I was telling some brothers, he was, one brother was actually telling me a story about he, was, he got a DUI and, you know, his first time he ended up spending like $13,000. $13, I'm like, I couldn't even believe it. But then he was telling me another story about a guy back in the day got a ticket, DUI, and then, you know, he ended up getting caught up. They didn't catch him until like 30 years later and he ended up getting slammed. I'm like, that's like what happened to Israel. It's always like that. Then I told him a story about a Gentile. They used to just... He be drunk, they used to just drive him home. But that just goes to show you, hey, you not sliding by on nothing. They just slapped him on the wrist and let him go. Don't do that no more, John. Don't, don't do that no more. And you go, you now, you getting hooked with everything. Because the Lord knew you, and the world wouldn't be in this condition it is if we would have did what we supposed to do. Yes, so since we didn't do, this is what happened. This is the state that we're in. Skip down to verse 6. Shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be afraid? Because, hey, that's what happens. You blow a trumpet. We still do it today. People be amazed at that. Why are you going to do it every Tuesday, 10 o'clock? The alarm goes off. That's, that's just like a trumpet, just modern siren that goes off. Just getting you prepared just in case some fallout happens. They ring the alarm. So that's what the trumpet is about. That's, that's what it's saying. It says, shall the trumpet be blown in the city and the people be not afraid? Because, hey, they, they, they think it's war going on, so naturally you're afraid. Or anything. It could be some, you know, natural disaster. You get afraid. Shall what? Shall there be evil in the city and the Lord hath not done it? So he tell, he said, shall there be evil in the city? We got some evil going on right now, right? Yes, sir. And all, <laughs> right over in this, and all, all over the world, right? Yes. You don't think the Lord done it? He telling you, that's evil, right? This pestilence, right? Yes, sir. He said, should that be evil? And the you know, Lord ain't done it? Yeah, he done it. Yeah, that's what's going on. Yeah, that's what's happening. And we're not ignorant to it. We understand that's what's taking place. The Lord is in control, and it's going on all the time. Let's show you an example of that. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 21. Some evil in the city. First Chronicles 21. And pick it up at verse 1. 21 and 1. Go ahead. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. So Satan, hey, hey, he provoked David to number Israel, which you shouldn't do because the Lord said we're going to be without number. Mm -hmm. So this is what he shouldn't do. But he, he, he provoked him. Verse 2. And David said unto Joab and to the rulers of the people, Go number Israel from Beersheba even to Dan, and bring the number of them to me that I may know it. Now know, we notice that, hey, he says Satan provoked him to do it, but David's king. So this is what's going on. He won a number. He, get, he got it in his heart, though. Mm -hmm. So we already see the effects of that. What was mm -hmm. he thinking about? Hey, I'm king. You know, I'm, you know all these people, I, give me a number on it. But go ahead. And Joab answered, the Lord makes his people a hundred times so many more as they be. But my Lord, the king, are not all they my Lord's servants? He said, man, ain't they all your servants? You don't need to know this thing. But go ahead. Why then doth my uh, Lord inquire this thing? Why will he be a uh, cause of trespass to Israel? He said, hey, that's, this is going to be a trespass. Why would you go forth to do this? But it's on his mind, so... And, and Satan provoked them, so mm -hmm. here we going. Verse 4. Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab, wherefore Joab departed and went throughout all Israel and came to Jerusalem. And Joab gave the sum of the number of the people unto David, and all they of Israel were a thousand, thousand, and a hundred thousand men that drew swords. And Judah was four hundred, threescore, and ten thousand men that drew swords. But Levi and Benjamin counted he not among them, for the king's word was abom abominable to Joab. Even Joab was like, nah, this ain't right. I'm not, I ain't even going to count all of them. So he didn't even count Levi and Benjamin. But go ahead. And God was displeased with this thing, therefore he smote Israel. So now he, after he did that, he, he locked, God started smoking Israel. Let's see what's going on. Go ahead, verse 8. And David said unto God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. 
But now I beseech thee, do away with the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. So this is what he was doing, right? He, 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 he numbered him, right? Yep. But let's see, what's, let's see what's happening. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Gad, David seer, saying, Go tell David, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things. Choose thee one of them, that I may do it unto thee. So he had three things. He would say, hey, I'm going to give you three choices to make. You're going to choose one, because you're getting, you getting hit. you got to make a choice and choose one. But go ahead. So Gad came to David and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord, choose thee, either three years famine or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that, while that the sword of thy enemies overtake thee, or else three days the sword of the Lord, even pestilence in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. Hold, now, on, so now you see, hold on, so now you see it, that he said, hey, you're going to kill with pestilence, right? Mm -hmm. That's what we got going on right now. But he said, I'm going to destroy, you can, can, can choose one of these, because this is what's going on. And you notice, you notice it was the angel of the Lord, he said, with the pestilence. Mm -hmm. See, this is what's taking place out there. This stuff is what's behind the scenes that's going on. You, can't, you ain't privy to that, but when you read this book and you're spiritually minded, you spiritually understand what's going on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. So we know what's happening right now. We know why people are dying in droves. We understand what's going on. We know what, what's taking place. Yes, sir. So when you have some information and have some knowledge and understand what's going on, it's a little easier to deal with things. You're not lost. I praise God, man, that I came into the truth and have some understanding. Mainly during these times. And it ain't going to do nothing but get worse. But at least I can have some silence on. I know what's happening right now. Because right. I be losing my mind right now. You got people in the truth. You see that stuff on social media all day, on TV, the news, all. Corona, 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 corona. So much, you could be healthy and you start feeling like you're sick in the head. <laughs> Just from hearing that. See people afraid to even cough. Mm -hmm. They cough. You still right. <laughs> cough. I mean, it's just, it's just. But by you having some information and some knowledge, you understand what's going on, so you don't feel, right. you know, like you lost. Right. Because it's terrible out here. But we have the knowledge of the Lord, so we understand who's behind the scenes, so we don't fear. We know, hey, whatever the Lord gonna do, it's up to His will. Because, see, when you have that understanding, you ain't got to stress out. I'm talking to my family members. They stressing out because they don't have no knowledge. They going crazy over this thing. You talk to them, they, oh, it's, oh, it's clean up. They, they got lights all out. You smell like lights all, all through the house. <laughs> now, I ain't saying you shouldn't have some precautions, you know. But I'm just saying this is what happens when you don't know. Pray for me. Pray for me. Pray. Yeah, you should be praying for all the time. But, hey, the Lord got to wake some people. Hey, this is going to shake some people up. It's going to be few. It's going to be few. Say that because I can read the book and know it's going to be a few. Mm -hmm. But, hey, that's life. But what verse you at? In the middle of verse 12. The start, verse 12. start over 12. Either three years famine. So these, these, these are the choices he got. Go ahead. Or three months to be destroyed before thy foes, while that the sword of thine enemies overtake thee. Or else three days the sword of the Lord, even pestilence, in the land of the uh, in the land, and the angel of the Lord destroying throughout all the coasts of Israel. So we got an angel messing with us right now, but go ahead. Now therefore advise thyself what word I shall bring again to him that sent me. And David well, said Hold on, hold on. What 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 choices we got here? <laughs> Man. All, all of them, it ain't, you know how we say, it ain't none of this week. Right. <laughs> ain't none of this week. But hey, David had a mind of God, so he knew what to say. Go ahead, verse 13. And David said unto God, I am in a great strength. Oh, yeah, you would be. Because ain't none of this is good, but go ahead. Let me fall now into the hand of the Lord, for very, for very great are his mercies. But let me not fall into the hand of man. I don't blame him on that. Yeah. that was the, if you had to pick a choice in the world, that was number one. He'll win on all, any game show. Ding, ding, that'll be number one. Yeah. I'm, hey, I'm dealing with the Lord. Hey, I'm, let me be honest, because I know his judgment is going to be righteous. So I'll fall on his hands. Because man bogus. Man, man bogus. They're they going to kick you while you down. 
Be like, he down. He can't get up no more. I'm going to give him one more kick. You know? That's just how man is. So he said, no, nah, let me fall in the mercy of the Lord, which I don't blame him. Verse 14. So the Lord sent pestilence upon Israel, and there fell of Israel 70,000 men. So he sent the pestilence, which we knew was an angel. So we know what's going on right now in the world right now. Angels out there doing wrecking shop. Yes, sir. But let's get some more insight on that. Go ahead. And God sent an angel unto Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying, the Lord beheld, and he repented of him the evil, so, and said to the angel that destroyed, it is enough. So he told the angel, hey, that's enough. So people want to say, if it's going to end, right here, you see an example of that, right? When it's enough, he's going he to subside, and you're going to be able to walk outside again, mm -hmm. go to the beach or whatever. To the next time. Right. Until it get worse. But you're going to get a chance to get some reprieve right here. He's letting you know, hey, when it's enough, it's going to be enough. That's why people say, hey, it's going to end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. When he, when, he, when he get where he needs to get to, because it's pestilence, right? Mm -hmm. And we know who's doing it. So we understand that. What verse you at? In the middle of 15. Go ahead. Stay now thy hand. And the angel of the Lord stood by the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. Go ahead. And David lifted up his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between the earth and, the, and heaven, having a sword drawn in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Man, that's a hell of a sight. Man. You see an angel in between heaven and that just have a sword out just, ah! But we see what's going on. Mm -hmm. And you wonder why people getting killed. He hit in Israel two, three times. Like, ah! Then everybody else get one. Because that's how it is. So we understand what's going on. But go ahead. Then David and the elders of Israel who were clothed in sackcloth fell upon their faces. See, you need to humble yourself. This is what needs to go on so we can get this plague to stay, you know? Yes, sir. But go ahead. And David said unto God, is it not the I that commanded the people to be numbered? See, and, and see, he said, hey, I'm the one who did it. Notice that it didn't even, if you read on, you go, we're going to see. It didn't even happen with David. We're going to read too much, but you could see that, hey, he was like, hey, why are you hitting the people? I'm the one who numbered them. But go ahead. Even I, it is, that have sinned and have done this, uh, it done evil indeed. But as for these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, O Lord my God, be on me and on my father's house, but not on thy people that they should be playing. Go ahead. Then the angel of the Lord commanded. Well, then the angel of the Lord commanded Gad to say to David that David should go up and set up an altar unto the Lord in the threshing floor of Ornan the Jebusite. So hey, he said, hey, go to the altar. And we know what you do when you go to the altar, right? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta have a sacrifice. You gotta shed the blood for the remission of sin. You gotta go through the process, cause hey, you gotta get this plague to stay. So this is what you're supposed to do. So the Lord have mercy, and this is, this is what takes place. But let's, let's skip down to verse 21 and read that and see how David felt when I, he did that. Go ahead. You said 21 and 26. 21 yeah, and 20, that's, that's a typo. Skip down to, uh, 20, yeah, it's 26. I'm sorry, 26. Uh -huh. Okay, 26. That's right. The handout's typo. All right. Go ahead. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings, and called upon the Lord, and he answered him from heaven by fire upon the altar of burnt offerings. Yep, so hey, to get this plague up off him, that's what they had to go through. But go ahead. And the Lord commanded the angel, and he put his sword again into his sheath thereof. And at that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him at the threshing floor of Onan and the Jebusite, then he sacrificed them. Yeah, so he put, put the sword up. The angel of the Lord put that sword up. Then he said, okay, I'm trying to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But watch this. Go ahead. For the tabernacle of the Lord, which Moses made in the wilderness, at the altar of the burnt offering, were at the season in the high place in Gibeon. Mm -hmm. But David could not go before it to inquire of God. Yeah, because he didn't, he didn't want to go out there. And why not? Go ahead. For he was afraid. Because of the sword of the angel of the Lord. <laughs> Rightly so. He saw, he, saw that, he saw that angel out there. He was like, man, I'm not going out there. I'm not going there. But that's just let you know what's going on out here. And you can see, hey, when it comes to sin, hey, something has to die. We've seen it all the way back to Adam. And all the way, hey, you got to pay for this. That's what it is. Without the shedding of blood, hey, ain't no remission of sin. It just ain't. Something has to die. Let's go further. 
Let's go Ezekiel 18. Ezekiel 18. And we're going to read one verse here. Because just to show you what's going on. See, when you start reading this and getting, and getting some understanding of the Lord poor spirit out on you, you start to understand and say, hey, it is what it is. And you know what it is because you know the Lord and you believe in him and you know he's in control of everything that we do. 18 and 4. Go ahead. Behold. All souls are mine. So he told you right there. He said, all souls are mine. See, when you start to learn and get some understanding of God, and you start having children, and they start to do what they want to do, you can, this, is, this is what you lay, you lay your hope on. You believe, say, hey, you belong to God. And you can just let it go. You ain't got to stress out about where they going and what they doing and why they not doing what they supposed to do. You ain't got to worry about that. You ain't worried about that because the Lord told you, hey, all souls, they mine. And, and, and you can be cool because, hey, whatever the Lord going to do is going to be just judgment anyway. Mm -hmm. So you can just leave it all to the Lord and be like, okay, do, do, you, do what you got to do, God. And I can sleep at night because I know the Lord going to take care of it. Whether it's, whether it's good or evil or whatever, he's going to do what you need. It's going to be righteous judgment, just what David had. He said, hey, put me in the hands of God. I'm good after that. So even though his choices was, were dire, he was like, hey, as long as I'm, I'm in the hands of God, hey, I know at the end of the day, everything's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. So that's the mindset we, we got to have. He said, behold, all souls are mine. The soul of the Father, so what? Also, the souls of the Son is mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So, hey, if you sin, we didn't already seen it, hey, it's going to die. Because sin brings forth death. It's just point blank what it is. It's always that. And that's just, that's just how it's always going to be. So when we wonder what's going on in the world, we can see it. We, we see what's going on, and hey, it is what it is. The Lord is in control of everything. Let's go to Exodus 32. Exodus 32. And this is Moses in the wilderness with Israel. Pick it up at 31. Exodus 32 and 31. Go ahead. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them gods of gold. Yet now. Hold up. He said they, they sinned a great sin. Because hey, as soon as they came out, Lord opened the Red Sea, killed all the Egyptians, did all of that. And then Moses was gone for about a month. And these people lost their mind and made a calf and everything. Messed up. So he's going back to the Lord explaining. He said, and, and, and Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Oh, these people have sinned a great sin and have made them goals, have made them gods of gold. Because they so crazy, they said these be the gods that led us out, out, of, out of Egypt, which is foolishness. But go ahead, verse 33. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, that I pray thee out of the book which thou hast written. Yeah, because he, he, he was the intercessor for the people like Jesus was, standing, standing in the gap. So he said, hey, blot me. If you ain't going to forgive them, hey, just blot me out your book. Book of life, take me out. Now, I can tell you right now, most people are like, nah, I ain't, I ain't dying for people. But hey, Jesus died for us, right? And see here, Moses, we can see right here, you know, he died for the missing, missing of our sins, right? Mm -hmm. But you can see Moses, he's willing to do what? The same thing. Because he's that prophet like unto him. So he's willing to die for the people. But what the Lord say? And the Lord said unto Moses, whatsoever has no, sinned. No, whosoever. Whosoever have sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. So he said, hey. Whoever sinned against me. But we just read, say, hey, he said, all souls is mine, right? Mm -hmm. So he's in control of everything. And we know when you read more in Ezekiel, he let's say, hey, the father sins not on the son sins, son sins. Hey, you all on your own. That's why he said, when you sin against me, hey, I, whoever sinned, that's who I'm blocked out. Mm -hmm. 
Your, you can blot not for your own transgression. That's your own problem. He said, verse 33, and the Lord said unto Moses, whosoever have sinned against me, him would I blot out of my book. The one who transgressed. Because we already know what sin do, right? Mm -hmm. It brings forth death. Yes, sir. Let's go further. Let's go to Deuteronomy 32. Verse 32. Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. And pick it up at verse 39. 32 and 39. Go ahead. See now that I, even I, am he. And there is no God that with me. See, we understand that. We know that, hey, he's the only God. Go ahead. I kill and I make a lie. See, the Lord say, how are you telling you right now? I'm the one who killing. People don't understand that and don't see what's going on. Not even just with the plague, with the shooting and everything. Lord control everything. He said he kill, he make a lie. If it's time for you to live, hey, you're going to live. If it ain't, hey, you're not. Because Lord in control of it all. But go ahead. I wound and I heal. See, he wound, he wound somebody, then he heal them. Go ahead. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So if people be sick... And it's unfortunate some people be sick unto death and they die. Hey, the Lord didn't heal you. Then some people sick and then they get healed up. They come back. Hey, the Lord healed you. Because he just said he wound, right? And he healed, right? Yes, sir. He do it all. Go ahead. For I lift up my hand to heaven and I and say, I live forever. Hey, because the Lord is in control of it. He's letting you know, hey, hey, I live forever. I, I am the man. Trust me, I got it all. It's all covered. And when we understand that, we, we can have some faith in that. And we can make sure that we don't, you know, get weary in, in due time when things go. Because right now, there's no time to be fainting over no coronavirus. And people will say, why, why would you say that? That's kind of, you know, it's dangerous out here, stuff going on. Because it's about to get a lot worse than this. <laughs> it's about to get a lot worse than this. You think this is something. You ain't seen nothing left yet. Read the scriptures when they tell you it's going to be worse than the world. Any event that ever happened in the world throughout lifetime, our lifetime right now is going to be worse than that. A lot worse than that. Because a lot of times you can look back to stuff and see like, man, I'm glad I went back then. No, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because it's going to be worse than we ain't seen right now. We think this something where you can't go outside without catch. Wait, wait and see what's happened next. Because this is where we had it. A lot of people walk around, you read through Matthew 24, and you say, pestilence and earthquake, we've been not seeing all that that's going on. Hey, let some of this corona stuff get out there on there. Now it ain't such a joke no more. Right. It's the real deal now, huh? But hey, this is what's going on. This is the world we're living in. This is what we have to deal with. And it's going to get a lot worse than Corona-19 or COVID-19, however you want to say it. It's going to get worse than that. But we can still hold our head up because we know, hey, the Lord is in control. And, he's, and we already know what's happening, how it got to what's happening out there on the street. We, we understand what's going on. It's unfortunate, but it is what it is. That's the way of the world. Let's go to Amos, the ninth chapter. And that's life, man. We need to buckle up. Because this is where we headed to. Lord might have some mercy on him to put that sheaf up, but trust me, it's coming back out again. Amos 9 and verse 1. Amos 9 and 1. Go ahead. I saw the Lord standing upon the altar, and he said, Smite the lintel of the door, that the posts may shake, and cut them in the head, all of them, and I will slay the last of them with the sword. He that fleeth of them shall not flee away, and he that escapeth of them shall not be delivered. See, this is what's going on, period. This is Israel here, but this is the world as a whole. The Lord is fed up with the whole world. 
And, you know, right now, you can get a lot of people to hear you because you see what's going on outside. He is fed up. We've been telling people this for years. The Lord is not pleased with what's going on in this world, and people refuse to listen. So he just, you know, when you just hard-headed, what happens? Things just get worse and worse. That's just the process of it. Common sense. This is what happens when you don't listen. When they say that your head is hard and your neck is stiff, this is what happens. Things just get worse and worse, and we know it's going to be like that because the book says it's going to get worse. But Israel as a whole don't want to listen, and this is what happened here. But go ahead. Where you at? Verse 2? Beginning of verse 2. Go ahead. Though they dig into hell, then shall mine hand take them. So he let them know. He letting you know, Israel, he said, no matter where you at, and this is why we always suffer more than anybody. He said, though you dig into hell, this will my hand take them. He said, if you're all the way down in hell, I'm going to still get you. Go ahead. Though they climb up to heaven, this will I bring them down. He said, if you in heaven, let's let you know that, hey, you ain't got nowhere to hide when you talk about dealing with the Lord. Go ahead. And though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out thence. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, this will I command the serpent, and he shall bite them. He telling them, he said, if, if they was in the bottom of the sea, he said, I'm going to have the serpent bite you. This is this showing you that the Lord, hey, he going to keep a perpetual hand on you. So that's why we die in this more like three times as much as anybody when it comes to this COVID-19 virus. Because the Lord said, I'm going to get you wherever you go. Why? Because he said he going to get you for all your if we read, right? Mm -hmm. All your iniquities. You can't slide with none. You're not getting away with nothing because you knew better. So you have to pay for everything. He said, and though they hide themselves, at verse 3, he said, though they hide themselves in the top of Carmel, I will search and take them out this. And though they be hid from my sight in the bottom of the sea, this will I command the servants to bite. He said, no matter where you go, I'm getting you. Heaven, hell, no matter, I'm, I'm going to get you. Verse 4. And though they go into captivity before their enemies. So you in slavery. He said, even if you in slavery, which is where we at right now, right? Mm -hmm. We're in captivity. What are you going to do while you're in captivity? This will I command the sword, and it shall slay them. Hey, the sword ain't nothing. To, your sword is what they use. That's, you can say a pistol. Mm -hmm. that's, what, that's the replacement of it. It's modern times. And that's what's happening wholesale. You turn on the TV, Israel getting shot. People standing outside getting shot crazy but he commanded sword on you so that's why it's happening innocent bystander people get shot oh why that why kids and all that stuff happen people always saying hey hey it's hey when sin is out there rapping rap like that hey, you gotta shed some blood yep. this is what happens when it's out there like that it's unfortunate but it's the truth go ahead and i will set my eyes upon them for evil and not for good it ain't for good and it's, just, it's a bad state. You got brothers. I seen a clip of a brother on social media. He was in prison. Like, man, they need to get me out of here. They dying in here. I ain't got it. But I'm like, I might get it. And I die. You got brothers coughing in there going, hey, 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 this is what it is. We here in prison house. So, mm -hmm. hey, it's on us. And it's unfortunate. But, hey, that's, that's the world we living in. But, hey, Israel don't do what they supposed to do. So this is what happened. Limitations. Lamentations 4. Lamentations 4. We're going to read one verse there. Verse 6. Because this is what happened to us. Go ahead. For the punishment of the iniquity of the daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of the sins of Sodom. So we read the story. Some of y'all haven't read the story. Hey, hey. It was a, bu a bunch of abomination going on there, which is what we're doing right now. And the Lord burnt Sodom and Gomorrah up. Mm -hmm. But he's telling them, he said, for the punishment of iniquity, verse 6, the punishment of iniquity of my daughter of my people is greater than the punishment of iniquity of Sodom. Why is that? That what? That it was overthrown as in a moment. So he said, hey, they, they just, Lord just burnt them up. Burned them up for all that abominable things they was doing. He just burnt them up. Strange flesh is what was going on. Mm -hmm. That's what that's what sodomy come from. Some of the brothers called it a slang. They just called it sods. Right. But that's what was happening. Lord burned them up, and that's what they doing right now. 
And that's why we're in the state that we're in. So he said, but they over, they, oh, he said, well, Israel punishment is greater than that because he's burned them up, it's done. It's like when people talk about when great tribulations come, if they want to make it like something to the worst, be worst fear, like I don't want to be tortured. I just want to die and be done. You want to be like Sodom and Gomorrah. But Israel ain't like that. Israel slowly, Lord said, I got my hand on you all day long. I'm going to beat you to a pope. So you ain't, you, ain't, you ain't getting that quick death. Right. I'm not giving you that. I'm going to stay on you constantly. It ain't going to be sweet. Go ahead, finish that. And no hand stayed on her. He said, he, said, he said, for the punishment of iniquity of my daughter, my people is greater than the punishment of sin, of verse 6, of sodomy, that was overthrown in the moment, and no hand stays there. Hey, no hand stays there. Lord, but he told you, if you go in the depth of the sea, you in the ocean, you in hell, you in heaven, I'm going to put my hands on you, right? Mm -hmm. And if I can't even reach you in the ocean, I'm going I'm to command the serpent, bite him. So he's going to be all over you, so we're not surprised when they come up with those statistics. Right. We understand what's going on. We not, we, like, we're not privy to what's happening. We know what's happening, and we know what it is. Let's go to James 1. James chapter 1. And pick it up at 13. 1 and 13. Go ahead. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But well, we already know who tempted. We done read it, right? Mm -hmm. We know where it comes from, temptation. We know how it even starts, right? Yes, sir. But go ahead. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. So he's telling you what, right? Mm -hmm. So you see what happened with Eve, right? Yep. We understand what was going on. We see what happened with David, right? Because yep. what happened was, hey, they was tempted of what? Of they what? Own, own lust. lust. Your own thoughts. Those are what get you in trouble. And we know it don't come from the Lord. Mm -hmm. But we know who it came from, right? Yes, sir. Because who tempted David? Say. It said that, right? He yes, rose sir. up, right? Yes, sir. Okay, but go ahead. And entice. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. See, that's what's always the end of the thing. When it's finished, it brings forth death. That's the outcome because that's the penalty of sin, right? Yes, sir. It, it brings forth death. Something has to die. So you got so much sin going on with man and what man is constantly doing right now, constantly framing evil stuff for good, and, and, it's, and it's not. You got marriages of same sex going, hey, it's just going to be more pestilence. I'm just going to keep it going because y'all don't want to do right. So you got all these diseases that's rampant out here, and we wonder why. We know why. Because we continue to do stuff that's contrary to God. So, hey, just keep it coming. So you already know the outcome of it and where we headed right now. We headed where, hey, it's going to get worse and worse. Because you can see people are not listening. They don't care. So, hey, it's just going to get worse. That, that's the state that we're in, unfortunately. And it's unfortunate that we got to go down this path. But, hey, it is what it is. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, and pick it up at verse 1. 8 and 1, go ahead. There is therefore no new condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Okay, because you've got to have a mind of God. And that's what we want to do. We want to walk out the spirit, which is the law. But go ahead. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. That's right. For, we get up under that blood, that's the whole purpose of that. Go ahead, walking in the law. Go ahead. For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh. See, he said, now he said it was weak. People don't understand. They trip this up and think, oh, yeah, the law was weak. No, it was weak through the flesh. Flesh messed up, not the law. Go ahead. God said in his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. Go ahead. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled See, in us. fulfilled, right? The righteousness yes, in it, right? 
Go ahead. And us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Because that's what you're supposed to. You're supposed to be walking after the spirit. But go ahead. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Go ahead. For to be carnally minded is death. Yeah, because you're thinking like you, the world is. If you got carnal mind, tell people, hey, you carnal minded. Why? Because you're thinking of the world. you in the world. And if you think like the world is, you're going to agree with the world. Hey, that's going to bring forth death. In verse 7, he said, because carnal mind, he said, verse 6, I'm saying, he said, for, for to be carnal minded is death. But what? But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Yeah, it's going to be peace. People don't realize this book here is righteousness for us to get right. That's what it is. Nobody in their right mind going to tell you that this book you, is going to be anything evil about. They'll tell you, this, if you go through, do this book, you do what's in here, hey, the world would be a lot better off. Yeah, it would be. And most people in their right mind will say that. But then you tell them to do it, they ain't want to do it. At all. So then you want the world the way it is. As I say all the time when people try to tell me things about how the world is and how they think it's messed up out here, I don't want to hear it. Oh, why you cold like that? Because you're not going to change. Start with yourself. Straighten yourself out. You're going to do what's righteous, what's in here to, to heal us? Because we could be healed today if everybody started following these laws and statutes and commands. Mm -hmm. We'll be healed. Prove me wrong. But then again, people don't want to do it. So then you don't want to be healed, and you want things to go on the way it is, so that's why I tell them, you love it like this. Oh, brother, why would you say that? That's cold. Oh, no, it's not cold. You want it like you don't want to correct it. You don't want it better. Because if you did, you would do better. But you don't want to do better, so you like it like this. You love it. And they walk away. Hey, it is what it is. Because if you change, then we wouldn't have this problem. What verse you at? Verse 7. Go ahead. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. See, it's, it's fighting. You got a carnal mind that's fighting. You fighting against the law of God. So if you don't follow the law of God, it's, it's telling you right here, he said, verse 7, he said, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. Why is it enmity against God? Why, why is it at odds with God? He said, for it is not subject to the law of God. That's why. When you tell people you can't eat this, you got to keep the Sabbath day. You enmity to God. God telling you what to do. You going against them. You fighting everything he tell you to do, you say you don't have to do it. He tell you to keep the seventh day, you say I'm keeping the first day. He tell you to keep all, to stop doing all those holidays, do these holy days, you, you ain't got, it don't take all that. So everything he tell you to do, keep his law, statutes and commandments, what you do, dietary law, keep all that. You certain things you eat, oh man, they clean it up. So it doesn't matter what the Lord say. It's going to be enmity because you think carnal minded, and that's your mindset to always go against God. You think you fighting with somebody out here. No, we understand what's going on. We understand what's going on behind the scenes. We know what's happening. We know what it is. And we all should be smart when we see it. When people go against what's written in this book, they had a dove on them. It is what it is. Now, I don't want to be the one walking around saying everybody got devil. Because, hey, trust me, everybody got the devil on them at some point. You just got to be able to deal with it and understand when he's there and recognize it and humble yourself and see what's going on. But when you're fighting against the law of God, that's exactly what's happening. Read that last verse in there, brother. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. So you can't please God doing your own thing. So you so much for you doing what you want to do. Having it your way, no. It ain't Burger King with the God. They think it's like that. You ain't going to just do what you want to do. You can't do what you want to do. That's the whole problem why the world is like that. Tell people all the time, change and see. The world is bad. You say it's bad, yeah. Let's try this and see what happens. You ain't, you ain't going to get nobody to hear. They ain't want to hear that. They don't want to hear it. They want to do what they want to do. And it's always been that case. Nobody want to straighten out and do right. They hate God, because that's enmity. God said, if you love me, what? Keep his commandments. Mm -hmm. So if you ain't keeping them, guess what? Because people think they're so righteous and they got it. Hey, you don't love God because you're not keeping his commandments. It shows. It shows your walk. 
We show what it is. People want to make it seem like you can't recognize what's going on in the world. I can recognize it. Lord gave me a little bit of understanding. I can see if you love God if you don't real easy. Just like I can. I've been in the trade for tw almost 27 years doing electrical work. Brothers walk up to me and say, oh, yeah, brother off the street. Oh, yeah, brother, man, I'm an electrician. Yeah, I know about that. As soon as they say a few words, I already know if they, they know electrician or not. Right. Tell you right off the back, dude, you don't know nothing what you talking about. <laughs> Straight up. As soon as they say a few words, because I know the lingo and how it go and what you should say. Right. You ain't fooling me. But that's the same thing with this word. People say, I know the Lord, and they're not keeping the Sabbath day. John said he's a lie and the truth ain't with him. Right. No, it ain't. You don't know the Lord. You think you know him. You're going to be like them verses he was reading, right? Yes, sir. Or your light going to become dim. <laughs> but let's read, let's get down to the last one. Let's go to, let's go to Romans 3. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, and pick it up at verse 23, 3 and 23. Go ahead. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yeah, and we all have. We all have sinned. Go ahead. Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Yeah, because we had to get up under that blood of Jesus. Go ahead. Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Notice it said past, right? Yes, sir. Once you get on board, and you, that's it. It's just your past. From that point on, you got to walk. You got to walk this walk. Go ahead. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just the, uh, the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Yeah, you got to believe, but you got to walk the walk. Go ahead. Where is boasting then? This is what Israel was doing. Go ahead. It is excluded. But um, by what law? Of works? Nay. But by the law of faith. Yeah, you got to have it. Because, see, what, what you people don't understand when they read it, say, it ain't about no works, brother. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't no saying this about no work. Hey, because Israel, you got to understand what was going on when Paul was writing this. He was letting them know, hey, when you talk about dealing with Israel, they were still sacrificed. They were thinking that they can be saved by their works like that before. No, that's over with. You got to get up on the blood of Jesus. The, the law within itself, you broke that already. That was what happened what we read in Genesis, right? Mm -hmm. So now you had to come through and you got to come up under Jesus, under his blood. Because the law, those practices and all that, it wasn't going to do you no good. You needed Jesus. But go ahead, finish that. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Go ahead. Is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God, uh, is he not so, is he not also of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. I guess, I guess the uh, old school Hebrews, they ain't going to be reading this part, right? Right. He said, hey, he's the God of everybody, right? Yes, but we sir. already read that, and we know that because he said what all souls was mine, yes, right? Sir. Yes, all sir. of them. He didn't say some souls, right? Mm -hmm. He didn't say the ones in the Caucasus Mountains, they ain't part of me, all that stuff with them old school Hebrews we talking about. He didn't say none of that. He said all souls is mine. Mm -hmm. So he said at 29, is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. Seeing what? Seeing it is one God which shall justify the circumcision by faith and uncircumcision through faith. Because we see it's just one God, right? It's yes, one sir. Lord, one faith, one baptism. It's one way we must go. Finish that. Go ahead, 31. Do we then make void the law through faith? See, that's the thing. People say, hey, should we just get away from the law through faith? We just, boy, we, we got faith. We don't even need the law. What does he say? God forbid. He said he forbid you to do that. What are you supposed to do? Yay, we established the law. Hey, you better establish the law. You better repent. You better do what you're supposed to, or you're going to get another plague, man. Without shedding the blood, there's no remission of sin. I thank y'all for y'all time. I don't know if, if Brother Eliza wanted to say some more before we close out. I'm not sure. But if he's here, he can hear me. He, he can. If not, I'm going to go ahead and let him uh, do the announcement. Our prayer is that the eyes of your understanding were enlightened by today's lesson. DVDs and CDs of our lessons are available. Please place your order in the offering box along with your donation and pick your DVD or CD up at the podium next Sabbath. 
Please uh, tune in to Thy Kingdom Come television program, which airs in various locations. Please join us at our other study classes, question and answers Bible study every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. via conference call line at 860-970-0010, ID number 343-531-334, and also stream live from via our website at thykingdomcome7.com. Children's Bible class ages 4 through 12 every Sabbath at noon. Team Forum Bible class ages 13 through 19 every other Sabbath at 5 p.m. If you feel you are ready to be baptized, please sign the baptism list at the podium and speak with Brother Levi. Following is the dress code for our services. All clothing should be modest in appearance. Nothing tight-fitting, over baggy, or saggy, or revealing should be worn. Men are to remove all head coverings, such as hats, and all hair coverings and shorts are not permissible. Women should wear hair coverings such as a hat or a scarf, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 through 7. If your young child becomes noisy during the lesson, distracting other members, please remove him or her to the TV monitoring area in the lunchroom of the, uh, of the church. Ties, any ties and free will offerings should be put in offering envelopes and placed in the offering box near the podium. Pray for our strength as we pray for you until next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. Okay, with nothing else, we're going to stand and face the rules and close out. Let us pray. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy shall endure forever. And his mercy shall endure forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord. Lord God of Israel. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy shall endure forever. And his mercy shall endure forever. In Jesus' name do we pray. In Jesus' name do we pray. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords. And the Lord of Lords. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.